We honor Scripture because we honor Christ. We credit the Scripture because we credit Christ. <coughs> and those who would break the Scripture dishonor Christ, deny His authority who said about this book, unbreakable. Denial of the authority of Scripture. And that involves, of course, denial that it's the Word of God and the Word of God only and that it came into being by inspiration. I say denial of the authority of Scripture is fundamentally a denial of the deity or Godhead of Jesus Christ. That was the issue at this time. Is this Jesus God as He claimed to be? And that's the issue with regard to the controversy over the Bible. Jesus said about the Bible, it cannot be broken. If He was mistaken, or if He lied, He isn't the eternal Son of God. And neither then is He the Savior and the Lord. Principally to deny the authority of Scripture that has to work itself out in a church, and it will when it gets started. To deny the authority of Scripture at any po point is to become a false church. Article 29 of the Belgic Confession, one of the great creeds of the Reformed Church, it says that the mark of the true church finally is this, all things are managed according to the Word of God. So that in that way, Jesus Christ is the head of the church. And that same article says that the mark of the false church is that it ascribes more power and authority to itself than it does to the Word of God. And thus, the false church banishes Christ. We receive the Scripture, therefore, as the authoritative Word of God, we do. We believers do. The covenant children of believers receive the Bible as the Word of God. And that's the work of Christ in us by these Scriptures. Oh, there's a lovely touch in this Word of Jesus that mustn't be missed. You notice? He doesn't say the Scriptures ought not to be broken. They cannot be. They can't be broken. Men try. Churches try. The whole world of the West is trying today to break this Scripture, but it can't be done because it's the Word of God. And it has its way with those whom God has chosen and for whom Christ has died through the preaching of, the, of, the, of these Scriptures. This Scripture establishes its own authority in the hearts and over the lives of the people of God. It elicits from them the confession that Christ made it cannot be broken. And it cannot be broken even with regard to the reprobate ungodly enemies of the Bible. In the end, they don't break the Scriptures, but the Scriptures break them. That word is vilified and denied and contradicted. Then in the power of God's justice, this word crushes them. Gives them over to ruin and blindness and hopelessness and despair. In the great judgment that is coming, those enemies will be judged by this word, by Christ who judges with this word. Receiving the Bible as the Word of God, the authoritative Word of God, we ought to be busy knowing it. How this man, Jesus, knew the Scriptures, he could go to that obscure psalm, pick out an obscure text at the right moment and apply it to the right subject. We ought to strive to know the Bible that way. Reading it. Studying it. 
flying into all the circumstances of our life. Because this word is unbreakable, we must obey it. Here's the test for the church. Will the church obey it? Obey the Scriptures by preaching its doctrines, by teaching its precepts. This is the test for everyone who professes to be a believer. Confess the truths of Scripture. Live according to them. There are a lot of young people and children here tonight. I call upon you. I don't beg because Christ doesn't beg. But I certainly urgently call you. Receive the Scripture as the authoritative Word of God. You struggle with all kinds of questions about your life, what kind of life, and the purposes of your life. Receive this Word as authoritative. Have its doctrines bound upon your hearts. <clears throat> Obey its precepts. Devote yourself to this Jesus Christ. <clears throat> With regard to us all, our calling in view of its being the authoritative Word of God is that we obey these Scriptures in their fundamental exhortation and command. Believe on this Jesus Christ who is the eternal Son of God in human flesh, the Messiah, sanctified by God and sent out into the world. And that truth is not set forth in this passage in an isolated way. In the verses that precede, Jesus sets Himself forth as the great Shepherd who lays down His life for the sheep in His redeeming death. And He does that according to God's election of these sheep. For he has said in the preceding verses, the Father gave them to me. And that election, he says in the very passage we read, is an election accompanied by reprobation. He said to these enemies, you are not, you don't believe in me because you are not of my sheep. I never gave you to me. He sets himself forth as the Savior who saves with an irresistible grace so that we persevered. We read tonight in this very passage, no one shall pluck them out of my hand. Believe on this Jesus, the eternal Son of God, <coughs> crucified and risen. Do so on the authority of the Bible. And on the authority of the same Bible, believe that when you trust in Him for salvation, you will have the forgiveness of sins. All of your sins. So that you have peace with God and the honor of a child of God. Believe that on the authority of the Scripture. And believe too that believing in this Christ <coughs> will be raised from the dead one day in the body. Be vindicated in the final judgment live with this Christ. And all those who honored His authority and the authority of His Word forever. <coughs> By His Word, we're going to judge movements and developments in the world today. At this conference, this Word will bring to us the Word for our and every other generation. Jesus Christ Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us pray.